Peace, everybody. It's Dynasty Demir, Search for Uhuru. Sorry about the delay. I apologize. We're about to get started right now. But today's topic, well, this evening's topic, this evening, we're going to speak on, you know, somebody sent me a video, interesting video, and I was just laughing my ass off. Turn this off. You know, it, it, I thought it was hilarious. And it was in regards to, the video was in regards to Roland Martin. So Roland Martin, and we've, we've talked about Roland a number of times on the show. You know, Roland who was doing the uh, cha-cha slide with Miss Hilly, Hilly Clinton, Hillary Clinton. You know, Roland who was embarrassed by the white supremacist, Richard Spencer, that Roland. Now I guess Roland is pro-African now. Now he supported the most anti-African presidential nominee, but now he's pro-African. So what I wanna do, I wanna play some of Roland's, uh, you know, his, his show, when he was speaking, you know, speaking in regards to I guess there's a new initiative in which a lot of these HBCUs are going to be connecting back to Africa. And so he went to a meeting that the uh, African Union ambassador to the U.S., very dynamic woman, very dynamic. Uh, so he went to a meeting where they, I guess they were rolling that out. And so I guess he was touched by it. And now he's pro-African and all this other stuff when just. Not too long in the distant future, I mean, distant past. Not so long, I mean, just a, three years ago. And this is important. This is very important. We have to touch on this. You are supporting the most anti-African woman in the name of hoping that you can secure a job, in the name of a job, you were tap dancing on national TV with the mo one of the most anti-African individuals ever. You were on stage tap dancing, doing a cha-cha slide, the boogie oogie, whatever the hell it was called. And now, because that, see, this is the thing about Roland and a lot of these other uh, Democratic operatives. If Hillary Clinton didn't win, See, now you notice how a lot of these Hillary Clinton supporters, how now all of a sudden they're turning pro-black and pro-African. But I guarantee you, if Hillary Clinton did not win, yeah, thank you, Mr. I'm American. If Hillary Clinton did not win, All of this pro-black, pro-African talk would not even be coming out of their mouths. Africa was the furthest thing from your mind. And the only reason why Roland Martin is now pro-African or pro-Africa is because he's running out of, you know, he's running out of tricks, basically. He's running out of tricks. Well, I remember the show when, you know, his uh, panel, his little panel trying to go after Umar. And since the Hillary um, strategy didn't work out, since the Hillary strategy didn't work out, now all of a sudden you're pro-African. Like, you're running out of tricks. You're running out of ideas. And the game is up. Well, let me play some of this video for you guys. In fact, let's do this. Let's start off with rolling tap dancing with Miss Hilly. 
Miss Hilly Clinton. Miss Hilly. Let's start off with that one. Let's start off with this one. Here we go. Uh, that is it for us. I do gotta ask you, do you know how to wobble? Do you know how to wobble? I mean, oh God. Hillary Clinton, the most anti African presidential nominee. This Negro, Roland Martin, wants to do the damn wobble with her. And what kills me, you know, you, they, they put people like Roland. They place them in front of the black community. They, you know, they, they, you know, they make them our leaders, people like Roland. And they want to talk about how qualified they are and how educated they are and, you know, how this and that. They, they want to go down their resume. But in order to get a job, all of that, I'm so smart and intelligent and you know, read my resume and read my background goes out of the window. And instead, you're tap dancing at the job interview. This is nothing more but a job interview. So, you know, you want to get hired by Miss Hilly, Miss Hillary. You know, instead of going in with your resume and your experience, job experience and your, your education and and all these so-called black leaders that they put in front of us. And they tell the black community, like, look, these are your leaders. These are your assigned leaders. They're all the same. They all brag on how knowledgeable they are and intelligent they are and how they should be leading the black community. But the minute white zaddy and white mama comes around, all of that is out of the window, and here comes the tap dancing, literally tap dancing and buffooning it up to get a job. So let's check out uh, Mr. Pro African now, Roland Martin. I'm sorry, what? Do you know how to wobble? I don't. You know how to wobble? You just lost the black folks right there. Look, you just, you and just. The black folks are. So he's like, look, and, or, and he's telling the truth, though. Now, I, I got to give Roland some credit here. Roland is telling the truth. If you want the black vote, all you have to do, you don't have to offer any tangibles. All you have to do if you want the black vote is do the cha-cha slide, the wobble, the electric slide, or show up to the, the neighborhood boys and, club, boys and girls club or the YMCA Salvation, or Salvation Army and play some basketball. You do that, you got the black vote. So I, I, Roland, you're right. You are absolutely right. Roland, you got a point. If you don't know how to wobble, you, you just lost the black vote. Absolutely, you're right, Roland. You are 100% correct. Because the black vote is that easy to earn where if you're a Democrat and you just wobble or you go shoot some hoops, you have earned the black vote. Because black people brag about, oh, black agenda. Oh, Obama. What do you mean? Oh, Obama ain't the pre oh, Obama didn't do nothing for black folks. Oh, he he ain't the president for black people. He's everybody's president. Black people brag about that. The so-called black, uh, you know, so-called part of black intelligence society, so-called. Again, so-called, they brag about how uh, you know these politicians do not need to have any off, do not need to offer any tangibles for the black community. They brag about it and are and boast about it and are proud about it. They're like, look, Democrat Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, just come do the bankhead bounce, the electric slide, shoot some basketball. And you got the vote. That's all the campaigning you have to do in the black community. That's it.
because black people have absolutely no standards, no dignity, no integrity. So all you got to do is just play some basketball, do the uh, bank head bounce, and we will, and 95% of black, you got 95% of the black vote right there. So you know what, Roland, you're absolutely right. You know, stand and teach you how to do the wild. Trust well, can me. Can you show me how to do it? Oh, I can show you how to do it. You're going to pick up some votes. Trust me. Well, but, well, but, I, but I got to say it in order like, to know some, it. I'm like, you need some music. I don't really do music, but I'm just saying. Okay, it. who can show me? Come on. Don't be right, shy. So, I told y'all Black Network we do a little bit different. Well, you, you, raised, <laughs> you raised it. Now, don't leave <laughs> me hang. Black, ne black Networks, we do things a little bit different. It's election season. This is a very important election. And you're talking about doing a wobble. But again, this stands a representation of our so-called black leaders. This right here. Him, Michael Eric Dyson, that's another one. I'm going to put my iPod on. I got music. Maybe, maybe yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, plug this up right now. <laughs> Y'all know I'll put it on now. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> It's a pleasure. Thank you so very much. Uh, Clapping thanks you as well. Uh, round of applause, please. Democratic presidential candidate. Thank you, Roland. Secretary Hillary Clinton. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh oh, doing a damn wobble. And say, say, and, and guys, this is the problem now. This right here is three, about three or four years after the assassination of Gaddafi, in which Hillary Clinton was laughing about it, giggling about it. And of course, you know, the so called black intelligent society, well, Donald Trump called African nations a shithole. Meanwhile, this lady right here that we're seeing this clown, Roland Martin, doing the wobble with actually turn an African nation into a shithole. You have Africans being uh, sold as slaves in Libya, in broad daylight, in the op open. Because, and part of the reason, because this lady right here. And Roland didn't grill her about that. Because again, this uh, clown show, Roland, Co Roland cooning it up on national TV is three years post the assassination of Gaddafi. But Roland didn't bring it up at all. Instead, he uses the opportunity to grill Hillary, Miss Hillary, instead of grilling her about what her role in destabilizing, shoot, Africa, and destabilizing Haiti. Let's talk about that as well. He wants to do the damn wobble. Now he's so-called pro-African. When you had the opportunity to, to grill one of the most anti-African leaders ever, instead you want to get on stage and do the wobble. I, I told y'all need the music. Don't don't let the ass kind of fool you. All right. Okay. Now. Here we go. Now this is Hillary Clinton. Three years prior. When she finds out about the assassination of uh, Gaddafi. Wow. Huh. Unconfirmed. Yeah. Unconfirmed. Yeah. Unconfirmed reports about Gaddafi being captured. Unconfirmed. Yeah, and we've had too many. We've we've had a bunch of those before. We've had you know have him, have had him captured a couple of. And she's happy as hell. And I'm going to play the next video.
She's happy as hell. But trust me, if she would have, if she would have won the presidential election, election, do you think Roland Martin would have gave a damn about Africa? Roland Martin is desperate. He just throwing whatever he can against the wall and, and, and trying to see what sticks. Because trust me, Roland Martin would not would, would care less about Africa if Hillary Clinton was in office. I mean, this is before Roland Martin was doing the uh, cha-cha slide and the wobble on stage with this lady right here. He didn't use that opportunity to grill her about what she did to Libya, her role in destabilizing Libya and destabilizing Africa, in which Africans are being sold as slaves right now as we speak. Instead, he took his opportunity, took that opportunity to do the damn wobble. But this man wants to come and tell you, you know, he wears his dashiki now, them dusty dashikis. Roland's now rock, rocking his dusty dashikis. Now he's pro-African and, you know, so excited about the HBCUs connecting to Africa. But if this woman right here would have won the election, he would have cared less about Africa. And he already proved that to you. Okay. Here we go. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed videos. We came, we saw, <laughs> we died. <laughs> There she goes, giggling about the assassination of Gaddafi, the Pan-African. Look at the smile. Do you think Roland Martin really gives a damn about Africa? Do you really think he gives a damn about Africa? This is his home girl. And that's the thing, these so-called, you know, the, 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 these people, the, the black so-called leadership that the dominant society places in front of, front of us and tells us that they are, they are our leaders, they're nothing more but entertainment for the dominant society. Roland Martin was nothing more but entertainment for Hillary Clinton. Let's do the wobble. All these leaders, Maxine Waters, all of them, they're nothing more but entertainment. Van Jones, all of them. That's all Roland Martin was, was entertainment. But he was so excited and just so ready to be the White House entertainment. He was pumped. I, he, he auditioned for the job. Again, don't, when, they, when they start talking and bragging about their degrees and how qualified they are and their experience and all this other stuff, when it's time to interview for the White House job, all of that is out of the window and they start dancing and doing the, the two-step and, and become nothing more than entertainment, period. Did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm, I'm sure it did. <laughs> so, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed videos. We okay. came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> okay, let me play this. Now, this right here, I don't see how anybody could take Roland Martin serious after this one right here. Now, this is white supremacist arch fiend white nationalist Richard Spencer and he completely embarrasses Roland Martin. Roland Martin, is, Roland Martin sticks his tail between his legs 
on News One. That's why he's no longer on News One. It was an absolute embarrassment. And the only reason why News One tolerated Roland Martin for the next couple of years after this was because, you know, they're opportunists too. They were hoping that maybe, okay, you know, maybe he'll rebound, you know, he'll he'll become house in-house entertainment for Hillary Clinton. And if he's in-house entertainment for Hillary Clinton, then News One will have access to the White House. Once that didn't happen, they separated ways. They went their separate ways. But you guys got to, and after this, I don't see how anyone can take Roland Martin serious or even respect him. Uh, I don't use the term white nationalist. I use the, I like the term all right, first off. And I also like the term identitarian because it gets at what I am or what I believe. And what is that? Identity is at the heart of my ideology. So What's you have to yeah, I, race is a foundation of that identity, undoubtedly. Now, you know, race is simply a creation of mankind. Okay, okay, Roland, dude, we are in a race-based society. Now, see, this is the issue with Roland. Now, Roland, he'll go to the African Union meeting and talk all this pro-black. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll come on his show, and now he's wearing dashikis and talking pro-black. But when sitting, I, but when he's eye to eye, with a white supremacist, all of the pro-blackness is he he throws that out the window. He don't even know what race is anymore. But in front of you guys, you know, he'll go to the, the NAACP image awards and you know all these other black boule uh get togethers, and he's pro-black. Black, blackity, black, 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 blackity, black. But in front of the white supremacist, Richard Spencer, he don't know. He doesn't, he, he doesn't know what. Oh, in fact, hold on. Let me roll. Let me play the tape. He tells you what he is, but it's not black. Here we go. That's a construct. It doesn't exist. I mean, my line is, I, no, I know who I am. So all of a sudden, race doesn't exist anymore. But when he gets around us, he, he's black, he black, 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 black. But around Richard Spencer, huh? What's that? Uh, I'm who? Black race, black, huh? What's that? First of all, I'm Roland Martin. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Well, <laughs> look at Richard. Like, huh? Okay. I'm a man. Do you first. identify as a black man? Oh, first of all, I identify as a man. He asked him, do you identify as a black man? Roland got scared and buckled. But now all of a sudden, this same guy that does not identify as a black man is all of a sudden now pro, uh, you know, he's pro-African. But if you don't identify as black, how can you be African? Are you an Afrikaner, um, Roland? Are you an Arab? Are you an Arab invader, Roland? Are you one of these uh, black Arabs that doesn't identify as black but identifies as Arab, Roland? Roland, are you a copper-colored Moor uh, uh, from Turtle Island, in indigenous? Uh, uh, like, what are you, Roland? And how can you be pro Africa but not be black? And when faced eye to eye with this white supremacist, Richard Spencer, you renounce your blackness. Again, in front of Richard Spencer, you renounce. Your blackness, but all of a sudden now we're supposed to believe because you got some dashikis. You know, you talk, you go to African Union meeting, and now all of a sudden you African, but you renounce your blackness. Okay. Identifies a man. I, I, I did, no, actually, it's not sexist because if a person is a woman, identifies a woman. Okay. So I'm a man. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. Are you a Christian? I'm a cultural Christian. Yeah. What the hell is that? He's a man and a Christian. Not black. He's just a man and a Christian. That's what Roland Martin is. He's a man and he's a man and a Christian. Not pro-black, not black, but he's a man and a Christian. He had no problem calling himself a Christian. But that black stuff, nah. 
I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not black. You know, it's a social construct. Race is a social construct. There's no black. There's no black. I'm, I'm a, a Christian man. Well, Christianity rolling is a social construct. Only reason why you're Christian rolling is because your slave master told you it was Christian. That's the only reason why you're Christian rolling, because Christianity is more of a social construct than being black rolling. Because we identified as black even before the year we became we came in contact with the European. But if you're from, if you trace your roots back to West Africa, pretty much if you trace your roots everywhere, anywhere but Ethiopia or Sudan, we were not Christians before the European came. Prove me wrong. There were some Muslims, but we weren't Christian. So Christianity is more of a social construct than being black. But you want to sit here and, and brag and boast on how you're a Christian, but how you're not black, Roland. But then we're supposed to believe, because you got some dashikis now, that you pro-Africa. Well, well, you know, I, many of us struggle with faith, but, uh, but no, I, no, I'm not already a Christian. Hold on, hold on. You, can't call yourself, oh, uh, you can't call yourself a cultural Christian and then say, I struggle with faith. I mean, have you profess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Now, Roland, the white supremacist like uh, 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 this guy right here, Richard Spencer, before Richard Spencer, that came before Richard Spencer, are the ones that created Jesus, Jesus Christ. So how in the hell are you going to give the, the, the white supremacist, a white supremacist like Richard Spencer, how are you going to give him a history lesson on Jesus Christ when they created Jesus Christ? That's why he's looking at you like that. Like, what the hell is this black guy talking about? This guy's nuts. He's crazy. We created Jesus and we forced it upon you, buddy. What are you talking about? You're preaching to the choir. How are you going to give me a history lesson about Jesus? When we created Jesus and the only reason why you love Jesus, Roland, is because we forced him down your throats, buddy. That's what Richard Spencer's thinking right now. He's talking to himself. He's like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Uh, no, I, I, I have in my life. I, I don't. I mean, look, what's, is this an no, imposition no, on me? No, no, no. no, actually, no it's an interview. But, but see, when somebody tells me they're a Christian, and I, I get, He's still stuck on his Christian shit. He can't let it go. He can't let it go. Like. <laughs> Like Richard Spencer's like, bro, like, he just, Roland is a militant Christian man who is, does not identify as black. Is it, right, right here in the video. He's a militant Christian man that does not identify as black. Here's, here's the video right here, him confronted with a white nationalist. And he backed down. He renounced his blackness. And I'm half culturally Christian. What is culturally Christian? I, I grew up in a Christian background. I resonate with Christianity and so on. Okay, I'm going to ask again. Have you professed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I, I have in my life, yes. Okay, so that means that you're a Christian. So how, how is it that with what you espouse, how do you find it to be uh, compatible with Christian ideals? Most Christians throughout world history now, Roland, you doing the wobble with uh, the, the, the terrorist Hillary Clinton, how, how does that fall in line with, with Christian ideals? How does that go hand in hand? Roland? agreed with me that identity matters and that race is real and that they're part of an extended family. But it's only this, well, my, this tiny slice of world history, like post-1965, that everyone thinks that Christianity is incompatible with identity. Well, actually, I, well, actually, I mean, he's giving them a history lesson. White supremacy and Christianity went hand in hand. What did Jomo Kenyatta say? See, now I gotta get rolling a history lesson. Jomo Kenyatta said when 
the missionaries came to Africa. Roland, the missionaries had the Bible, the African had the land. The missionary taught the African how to pray, close his eyes and get on his knees and pray to Jesus. When they woke up, the African had the Bible and the missionaries had the land. Again, let me repeat that. When the missionaries came to Africa, the missionaries had the Bible and the Africans had the land. The missionary taught the African how to close his eyes and pray to white Jesus. And when they open up the eyes, open up their eyes, the missionaries now had the land and the Africans had the Bible. And that's what he's trying to tell you, Roland, but you just stuck on this, uh, renouncing how you're black, but how you're just a Christian man. And he's, he's trying to tell you that. I, I just summed it up for you, Roland. If you, if you use world history, the people who actually use Christianity to justify slavery. No shit. That was the perp. That's why I was founded for. In the, oh, God. Yes, Roland. That was the purpose of it. That's why you had your council of Nicaea. Yes, Roland. That's. Yeah, that, I mean that. Yeah, I mean it was used to justify slavery. And Richard's looking at you like, yeah, man. I mean, you're not teaching. You're not telling me anything new. It's just why the hell are you Christian? Why, if if you were introduced to Christianity by your slave master, why are you Christian? And that's what Richard Spencer just he doesn't understand. He's like these Negroes are lost. I mean, I can't, but I mean, I just can't believe it, buddy. I mean, you're. I mean. We introduced it to you through force, buddy, and you just, you can't let it go. And the enslaving yeah. people who look like me, uh, and so, so and why are you a Christian? But, uh, hold on, let me, let me rewind that back, hold on. Oh, let me rewind that back, hold on. Extended family. Well, it's only this, well, my, this tiny slice of world history, like post-1965, that everyone thinks that Christianity is incompatible with identity. Well, I actually, I actually if, you, if you use world history, the people who actually use Christianity justify slavery and the enslaving yeah. people who look like me. Uh, and so, so and why are you a Christian? There I'm we go. And, and, Richard Smith yourself, so why are you Christian? And why are you a Christian man first before you, you're black? Why am I a Christian? Uh, because those people actually were false Christians. Those okay, so Roland, the people that invented Christ, the people that brought to you Christianity, introduced it to you, that pretty much invented it, they're the fake Christians when they created it. And that's why Richard Spencer is just sitting there like, this guy. I mean, God, we we the ones, your King James version of the Bible, buddy, we wrote it. All your versions of the Bible, buddy, we wrote it. The ones you read, buddy, we wrote them all. The white supremacist us. What are you, what are you talking about? That's what Richard Smith is saying to himself right now as we speak. People were fake Christians. Those people probably were cultural Christians, where they somehow allow culture to inform their faith as opposed to their faith informing their culture. But but I but, but I actually just I look <laughs> like Richard you're just like yeah whatever. Back to the question I asked you. For most of that, Christian history, there was feudalism, there was serfdom, there was slavery, there was right, identity, right. there was nationalism. And, and those all of these people yeah. unChristian, but you no are no, no 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 those people who actually. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Rich, I mean, Rich is just telling him, like, look, buddy, we we made it. All your versions of the Bible that you read, we created it, we wrote them. We decided what's in your Bible, the white supremacist. So how can you tell us, the people who scripted Christianity, that we're not the real Christians, buddy? <laughs> but you're all, you are? Will we force your script, our scripted version of Christianity and put it down your throat? And now you're just, you just can't let it go? <laughs> Richard is just, just confused. And here comes I Buck and Roman. Actually, uh, who chose to pimp the Bible as opposed to actually believe in exactly so what Jesus Christ all talked about. Of, most all of Christians throughout world history were pimps. No, 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 what I'm saying is here, as a Christian, I believe in the word uh, as opposed So you believe in the word that the white supremacist gave to you, Roland. 
And this is what Richard Smith was trying to tell you. He just doesn't understand. Richard's just like, I just, this is just, I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words. Richard's lost for words. He's just, I don't get it, Richard. So, I mean, I don't get it, Roland. So, you believe in the word that we wrote, scripted, and gave to you. That's what Richard's thinking to himself. He's just, Richard's just, he's lost. But Roland's going on and on and digging, digging himself in a deeper hole. Opposed to uh, this false nonsense uh, that most of those folks were, but yeah, but they they were also fake Christians because they used the word to actually enslave. I'm so glad we preached true Christianity. Well, 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 first of all, in 2016. Well, first of all, first of all, you barely <laughs> identify as one, so you said you cultural, you dance around it, and I, I'm being, I'm it's, being honest, it's around. No, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Well, I'm and, not going to lie to you. No, that's fine. But I still got to go back to this here. So, so, are you white supremacists? No, I'm not a white. Okay, I've 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 heard enough. I've I've heard enough. But let's hold on. Let, let me let me go back to this part. So this is Richard Spencer, guys. Let's let's listen to him in the beginning. To say absolutely racist. Unlike past gatherings, this meeting was energized by the election of Donald Trump. Here is some of what took place at the conference this weekend. Hail Trump! Hail our but this is what I don't understand. Now Hillary Clinton is about as much of a white supremacist as Richard Spencer. But why? Rolling, why weren't you giving Hillary Clinton that? Or I wouldn't necessarily call giving Richard Spencer, which you that with I'm watching that work. Why weren't you? Why weren't you grilling Hillary Clinton and putting her on the hot seat? People, hail victory! <laughs> I mean, white power symbols all over the place. I mean, this is just embarrassing. No one will honor us for losing gracefully. No one mourns the great crimes committed against us. For us, it is conquer or die. To be white is to be a striver. A Listen, no, 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 no confusion. To be white is to be a striver and a crusader. No confusion. Meanwhile, we got rolling. Race is a social construct, but I'm a Christian man. And the only reason why you're a Christian is because of where your slave, where the slave ship dropped you off at, Roland. If the slave ship would have dropped you off in, in the uh, Middle East, you would be a Muslim, Roland. So again, Christianity is more, religion is more of a social construct than race. An explorer and a conqueror. We build, we produce, we go upward. And we recognize the central lie of American race relations. We don't exploit other groups. We, we don't gain anything from their presence. They need us and not the other way around. We are not meant to live in shame and weakness and disgrace. We were not meant to beg for moral validation from some of the most despicable creatures to ever populate the planet. We were meant to overcome, overcome all of it, because that is natural and normal for us. America was, until this past generation, a white country designed for ourselves and our posterity. It is our creation. It is our inheritance, and it belongs to us. Uh, here's what President-elect Trump staff had to do. All right, so that's Roland Martin, y'all. That's Roland Martin. Now he's pro. He now he's uh, pro African. Roland Martin. I gotta hold on. I gotta pull up the video. I gotta pull up the video of. Uh, hold on one second. I gotta pull up the video of Roland. Hold on one second.
Here we go. Let me pull up the video of uh, Roland. Now professing to be uh, African with his dashiki on. Let me share the screen real quick, guys. Just give me one second. I just thought it was hilarious. Whoever sent that sent me that video, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for sending me that video. That was comedy. Here we go. Here we go. Uh oh. More rolling, everybody. Give to us supports our daily digital show. See all the different comments. Okay, you see, uh, you, see, you, see you see the dashiki now. Now, Roland, listen here, man. If you ever watch this video, listen, man. My homeboy in Senegal will make you a fire. I mean, Roland, that's that China. Roland, I know a Chinese made, cheaply made dashiki when I see one. My guy in Senegal will hook you up, Roland. Just let me know. To make there, uh, but but I have to I have to uh, speak to speak to this. And it was a sister who was the ambassador of the of the African uh, mission here, uh, and uh, she opened this thing up. And, and I really want you to hear what she has to say uh, because she makes a direct connection between what the colonizers did to the continent in 1884, but also what is happening today in terms of this whole dysfunction that exists uh, with. Africa. Man, listen, Roland, you could care less about the dysfunction of Africa of Africa as long as Hillary Clinton was in office. You could care less. But again, he's just throwing whatever sticks on the wall now. Roland is desperate. He's desperate. I mean, he's desperate. He's just whatever could stick on the wall. That that's where we're at now with Roland Martin. That's that's where we're at. Got the dashiki. Also with those of us uh, who uh, our ancestors come from the motherland. And so I, I want to play this for you, uh, which is an excerpt from what she had to say. Then we're gonna chat with her about our panel. I really think uh, you're gonna be blown away about what she has to say. Go right. Hello, my fellow patriots. Oh, I'm Kate Corley, former Navy SEAL platoon commander. Sniper and Hey, I've 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 actually had the opportunity to meet the ambassador. Powerful sister. I'm telling you, powerful sister. Powerful sister. I hope you guys can meet her as well. You know what civilization? They set out to destroy us. And then who comes in with the mail on that coffee? So they gave Djibouti the same sovereignty as the United States. They gave Burundi the same sovereignty as China. They gave Togo. You see, the EU realizes okay. the individual little countries. To understand that this has been going on from back then to, to a little bit further, to a little bit further, to, to now, you know. Um, and it's not something that I would hazard a guess that many African Americans are aware of. Not in the full course of detail. Uh, and and I, mean, I think I made a point when I stood up there. I said probably if you ask 98 percent of black folks about the 1884 Berlin Conference, they would have no idea what you're talking about. 99.9. <laughs> now, Roland, you had no problem with Miss Hilly's Berlin Conference, her version of it in Libya. But now all of a sudden you're concerned with the Berlin Conference of 1884. So you know, we get so wrapped up in our struggles here, we forget that there are similar struggles. Man, Roland it could care less about the struggles here. He was busy doing a one-two step wobble and getting blasted with uh, Hillary Clinton and getting blasted by white supremacists on News One. He, he wasn't worried. He ain't worried about the struggle. That, that really are not as dissimilar as people would like to say that are going on in all, all other parts of the world, specifically Africa and South America. And um, Teresa, what's important here is the ability to be able to uh, connect, uh, and that is to connect uh, African Americans um, with the continent, 
when you talk about uh, the natural alliance, it's there. But you got folks who hook, hook it together. Reverend Leon Sullivan, of course, Le Leon Sullivan. Hold on, hold on. Reverend Leon Su Sullivan. Hold on. Let, let's let let Roland finish. He did this uh, for many years for, out of Philadelphia, having the annual conferences there as well. And it's interesting because one year they were going to have one of the annual conferences there, and um, and I had these folks who uh, matter of fact, I probably still have the emails right now somewhere. Uh, and they were I was one of the folks they were trying to invite, and I couldn't go, but they were sitting here blowing me up. Uh, no, you shouldn't go. Now the reason why you couldn't go, Roland, to the brothers' conference is because you were too busy doing the uh, wobble with Hillary Clinton. That's why you couldn't make it. You could not fit it into your schedule because you was too you were too busy doing the cha cha slide and cooning it up with Miss Hillary Clinton. That's why you couldn't make it. You just didn't have time. You you couldn't. You know you had to spend your personal time with Miss Hillary. Because, oh, this particular leader here, uh, what, what they have. To now, you worried about the leaders, the corrupt leaders in Africa, but you were kicking it. You were trying desperately to get a job with uh, corrupt Hillary Clinton. Come on, Roland. All of a sudden, you're concerned about going to Africa and meeting with leaders in Africa because of the, the corruption. But you have no problem hanging out and doing the cha-cha slide wobble with the one of the most corrupt individuals on the planet, Hillary Clinton. Come on, Roland. Come on. I think I think the issue is that, uh, the, the, the so-called corrupt leaders weren't going to offer you a job. That's what it is. But they would have offered you a job. You would have had no problem going because you had no problem auditioning for a job with Hillary Clinton, the corrupt leader Hillary Clinton. No problem at all. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know how corrupt they are, and I'm sitting there going, you can say about a whole lot of folks here as well. Yeah, the, the Hillary Clinton, uh, Roland, the lady you were tap dancing with. Yeah. And the reality is, they need our help. We need their help as well. So why would we not work together? Roland, you need all the help you can get. You need all the help you can get, Roland. Yes, you. Again, this guy's desperate now. Well, Roland, look, look, man. Holla at my. I'll put you in contact with my tailor in Senegal, man. He'll he'll hook you up. We should work together, and I think that connectability aspect that you're talking about. All right, I'm done. I'm done with that. All right. But yeah, I just I had to speak on this. I had to speak on it. So guys hit that uh, hit that like button too. So Roland Martin, who renounced his blackness, is now all of a sudden pro African. All of a sudden, he's pro-African. He, he renounces African, Africanness, renounces blackness. Now he's pro-African. All right, I'll take some calls. If you guys want to call in, let me know. Here's my email. Hit that like button as well. Yeah, it depends which way the wind is blowing. If you guys want to hop on, let me know. But I just thought that was interesting and hilarious. Since Miss Hilly, Miss he, since he didn't get the job of Miss Hilly. Since he didn't get the job of Miss Hilly. You know, all of a sudden he's pro African. All of a sudden he's pro African because he didn't get the job of Miss Hilly. He's come to see the light. Shout out to Susan Simpson. <laughs>
There we go. Roly Poly isn't pro black. He's he's Bole. Hmm. But anyways. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and check out. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you share and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Until next time, family. Dinosaur Mirror Search for a Huru. Peace.